Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And we just want to welcome each one that's here with us this evening. Those that are meeting with us online, God bless you. And we thank the Lord for each one that comes and worships and praises the Lord. For prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. And we're going to be hearing some powerful messages from the Lord this evening. And I know God's going to do some wonderful work in each one's life here today. We keep in prayer mom who's not well still. And we just believe in God for a healing in mom's body in Jesus' mighty name. We know that the Lord's going to touch and heal her. Her voice will come back. And uh, she's making a noise quietly at the moment. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is such a good God. Amen. And we know that the Lord's going to touch and heal her in Jesus' mighty name. We also believe for a healing in Diane. And we know God's doing a miracle in Jesus' name. Also for Tim and his family is that the Lord will just touch them and heal them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Father, we just say thank you. We love you. We appreciate you, Lord. We know, Lord, that you do hear and you do answer every prayer. Thank you, Father, that, Lord, that you heal those that are needing healing. Lord, just reach down and touch them. Thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed right now. We claim that healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for... Uh, Lord God, uh, for Mari, Lord God, who's needing a touch in her body. And as I prayed for her today, I thank you, Lord, that you send your word and touch Mari Gunn now in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Father God, for healing to spring forth in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, as we worship you here this evening, oh, Lord God, we just want to welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit. Lord God, we may be two or three in number, but there you are in the midst and there to bless. Thank you, Lord God. With you on our side, we have a majority. And I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, that you are for us and not against us. I thank you, Father God, and, Lord, that you'll lead and you'll guide and you'll direct. We give you thanks and praise and glory for you alone are worthy and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's sing this unto the Lord. Hallelujah.
open prison door sets the captive free. There's a river of life flowing out of me. Give the Lord a praise offering. We love you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Let that river of life flow out of us, I pray, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. guide us and direct us, I pray, Holy Spirit of God. And I thank you, Lord God, that everything that is said and done here today will bring glory and honor to your name. Father, you are in control of our lives. Father, I know, Lord God, that, Lord, you never leave nor forsake us. You are faithful. So many times we hear of so many answers to prayer, and we just want to say thank you for your blessing. We thank you, Lord, that you never leave nor forsake us. You are faithful to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.
Today I want to minister to us. God bless you. You may be seated. On spiritual warfare, as we come war on the heavenlies, as we come closer to the time now when we're going to be fasting and praying. You know, friends, sometimes we can pray and pray and pray and pray. But sometimes we've got to go into fasting. And some things are stubborn. Because remember, sometimes the human spirit is very stubborn. And we need breakthroughs. We need this spiritual warfare. We need this breakthroughs like we've never seen before. Put up the music a little bit. Thank you. We need breakthroughs. We need the breakthrough. We need the answers to prayer. And it's going to come, friends, as we start to do spiritual warfare in this time of prayer and fasting. And if I can give a title to the message tonight is, what's got hold on you? What's got hold on you? What's got a hold on you? And there are many things that people have a hold, they ha that has a hold on them, and it keeps them back from breakthroughs in their lives. I want us to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through to 5, 3, to th three, three through to 5, <laughs> sorry. And it says, for it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. So many people want to fight their battles in the flesh. But friends, our battle is in the spirit. I said our battle is in the spirit. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. There are strongholds that are holding people's blessings back. There are strongholds that are keeping people bound. That cannot, they cannot get free. There's many that over this corona have allowed old strongholds to take them. And they are battling to get loose from those things. And so when we fast and pray, we believe God that these strongholds, the pulling down, that not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. God has given us the weapons of the warfare. The weapons of our warfare is what we're going to learn about. To be able to do spiritual warfare and to be loosed from these strongholds. Verse 5 says, casting down arguments. Here's some of the things that have become strongholds. You can start a conversation with somebody nowadays. And within five minutes, they are arguing with you. Have you noticed? People are short-wicked. They just, you can't even talk to them. You can't converse with them. They lose it. They have arguments. Casting, now this is what pulling down these strongholds is going to bring. It's going to bring casting down arguments and every hard thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The spirit of rebellion will be broken. Rebellion, friends, is as the form of witchcraft. It's likened to the form of witchcraft in the Bible. Casting down arguments and every half thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And as I was thinking about this last night, the Lord reminded me of Korah, Dathan, that went against Moses and Joshua. And God said to Moses, separate yourself. Stand clear of these people because I'm going to bring judgment upon Korah and his household. You see, friends, many people don't realize that, that, that when the judgment comes, it doesn't just fall on the, the wicked person of that household. It falls on the household and everything of that household. And what happened to Korah and Dathan is God said to Moses and to, to Aaron, separate yourself, come out, come, come back, come back, come back. And judgment fell. 
Judgment fell on Korah and Dathan. The Bible says the earth opened up and swallowed them up, their livestock, their houses, their tents, everything. Guilty and innocent of that clan. Casting down arguments and every half thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Do you know that what Korah and Dathan did? They rebelled. They rebelled. Do you know that in the, in the, in the day and age that we live, rebellion is admired. The rebellion. They admire a rebellious person. But in God's time and in, in God's ways, and even today, rebellion is likened unto witchcraft. And so we must be very careful. And Korah and Dathan, they rebelled against Moses. They questioned Moses. They questioned his vision. They questioned his leadership. And the Bible says that the earth opened up and swallowed them and their family and their livestock, their tents, and everything went down into the pit. There's a, there's a poem that has been written by Edward Stanford Martin. It's called, My Name is Legion. And I want to read this poem to you because many people, and I, if you've read the devotion from this morning, many people are not listening to the right voice, the voice of the Spirit. But they're listening to that evil spirit that is always trying to lead you astray. And this poem was written many years back. And it says, yeah, within my earthly temple, there's a crowd. There's one of us that's humble and one of us that's proud. There's one that's brokenhearted for his sins. And there's one that's unrepentant, sits and grins. There's one that loves his neighbor as himself, and one that cares for naught but fame and self. From such corroding care, I shall be free, if I could once determine which is me. I think this poem concisely describes the two natures that we deal with in a day, on a daily basis. There's what we call, and we have, I don't know if you've ever heard it being said, the second nature. Oh, it's like second nature to me. We usually say that a certain thing is second nature with us. And when we say something is second nature to us, we mean that it has become a part of us. It's become familiar. It's like second nature. It's also, it's not always something that complements us. Have you ever seen a parent lose their rag and a few hours later maybe you'll meet the child that belongs to those parents and somebody does something and that child will respond. It's like second nature of what they've been taught and they've seen and they react the same and you think, whoa, I just saw that. It's the same. It's like second nature. It becomes familiar. But there's a second nature that needs to be dealt with. But the Bible speaks to us that there's the first nature that we must nurture. There's also the first nature and the second nature in the spiritual realm. And in the spiritual realm, the two natures oppose each other. You see, friends, we've got to make a choice. Are we going to stand on the side of the things of God or are we going to stand on the side of the things of Satan, the things from darkness? The Apostle Paul describes a graphic term, in graphic terms the conflict of our first nature and our second nature. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 7, verse 14 through to 19. In Romans chapter 7, 14 through to 19 says, now listen to this carefully. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. This is Paul speaking. For what I am doing, I do not understand. 
For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Isn't that very much like mankind nowadays? The things that you hate, those are the things you go and do. If then I do what I will not do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now that is a powerful scripture, friends. And we must take cognizance of what's mentioned in that scripture. How many times have you wanted to do what was right, but couldn't find the strength to do it? And friends, over this time of fasting, when we go into this fasting, I pray that even that you will consider fasting even before Palm Sunday. To separate yourself and in order to strengthen yourself spiritually, to pull down these strongholds that have so easily beset you. You see, our first nature to do good was given to us by God. Hallelujah. That's the first nature that was given to us. But the opposing nature, the second nature, was given to us by Satan. And friends, it opposes the first nature constantly. Like Paul says, I will to do good, but the second nature wills to do evil. And yet I then find myself doing evil. But you see, friends, it comes down to you and I. God's not weak. It's us. And that's why when we fast and pray, we become strong. It's no longer about us. It's no longer about me. It's about God. How close can I get to God? And that is what we're trying to get across. And I know sometimes it's just not taken too great from the pulpit anymore. But you know what, friends? I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel. Because that's what God's told me to do. You can go to a church that's going to tickle your ears. But will that get you to heaven? Rather hear the truth. Change your ways. Turn from your wicked ways. And let's serve the Lord together. You see, friends... We may discover the truth, but the difficult part is making practical application. We have got to, what God shows us, we've got to apply it to our lives. We can't just be hearers of the word. We must become doers of the word, the Bible says. We must apply the truth through repentance. So many people don't like to hear that word repentance. You see, repentance is going in one direction. And when the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when we start doing spiritual warfare, when you start cleaning out your closet, when you start cleaning out your life, and the Holy Spirit starts putting His finger on things in your life that should not be there, we've got to then have a heart of repentance. And we've got to turn from our wicked ways. We've got to change. But you know that the world teaches us to be an enemy of change. Paul experienced this problem. We face the same old fight every single day of our lives. We face the same enemy every day. It's the enemy of change. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Wonderful, powerful words. But Lord, I need to change And there needs to come some change in people's lives. In order for us to be strong in the spiritual warfare, we need to change. We need to change into His image. Not into the image of the second nature, but we need to be changed into the new new creation. The image of God. You see, the enemy 
of change is the enemy of the first nature. Listen to this quote. The chains, the chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. When we don't deal with things that God by His Holy Spirit is showing us, when it is light and it can be removed, if we don't deal with things then, later on when they become heavy chains, you battle to break them. And that's why we go into this time of fasting. And I, I, I wish we could go onto that many more. And I pray the conviction of the Holy Spirit will be upon those that are here and those that are watching to, 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 to fast and pray for, for 10 days. 10 days breaks a habit. Change comes as you begin to fast and pray. I want to quote that again. The chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. I remember when I was a, a smoker of cigarettes. It took one day. One day on Durban beachfront. Trying to be a heavy. Took the first puff. Took the second puff. And let me tell you, it's the same as this. The chains of habit are too weak to be felt. Ah, this dead, I can leave that. I remember when I got caught doing it. I said, ah, I can stop it. And suddenly, the weak chains, too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. It was only years later, after being a chain smoker, of nearly 60 cigarettes a day, that God delivered me. You see, friends, deal with things when they're small. Deal with the small things that, uh, that are destroying your life. Don't let an offense become a hatred. Deal with it when it's an offense. The chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. So I want to ask you today, what's got hold of you? What's got hold of you? Like the scripture says, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 5. For though we live in the world, we do not war, wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Why are we not getting rid of the strongholds in our life? Because the longer you leave that, that hold, it becomes a stronghold. You see, friends, it starts off with a light hold. And you think, this, this is not a habit. It hasn't got me. Many people that have been alcoholics, those that have been a drug addicts, will tell you it starts off as a hold, and it, you feel like it's, it's, it's okay. It's not okay, because if you don't deal with that hold, it's going to become a stronghold. And we need to start exercising in the area of spiritual warfare and start using the, the, the weapons that the Lord has given to us. Demolishing strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the, the knowledge of God that we take captive every thought. There's so many things that are going to come out of this scripture. I'm going to teach on this. Our thoughts. What, how we sometimes just allow our thoughts to just wander and we've got to take captive our thoughts. We've got to take captive those, those arguments that we must not have arguments against God and the things of God. Don't challenge God. We must demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I remember when I was growing up, I would hear grandparents, I would hear parents ask this question when a young person or myself, 
would misbehave. They would say something like this, what's got hold of you? You know, when they, what's got hold of you? There's another question that they will ask you when you misbehave. What's got into you? And we've got to ask those questions. What's got hold of you and what's got into you? That you're so argumentative against God and you're rebelling against God and you're challenging God and challenging the church and challenging Christianity. What's got into you? And we've got to be very careful. Because those arguments are going to be demolished. And every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I would like to ask each of us this evening. What's got hold of you? What is the the, the hold in your life that is slowly but surely becoming a stronghold? It needs to be dealt with. Notice what Paul says. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We need to learn spiritual warfare. We need to learn to to battle in the heavenly realms. For our, our fight is not in the flesh. It's in the spirit. He speaks to us about strongholds. Strongholds speaks to, of, speaks to us of a city with iron walls built around for protection from the enemy attack. Now, not very many times will you see iron walls, but I want you to know we start putting up iron walls erected around ourselves, iron walls. You know when somebody becomes iron world and they resist obedient change, that's sometimes the stronghold that has got hold of you and it needs to be broken. A stubbornness, not a stubbornness for the good, a stubbornness for the bad. You challenge God, you challenge everything. And God can't work with you. God can't use you. God wants to use you. But we've got to get rid of that stubborn, resistant, resistance to obedient change. Paul says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The enemy who has a stronghold, on us is deeply entrenched in our minds. And we've got to make sure we protect our mind. Be careful what you open your mind's eye to. Protect your mind. It gets deeply embedded in your emotions and your will. Now friends, we running out of time now. We're going to go and pray. But here's an example You know, when a person plays golf, they have what they call a handicap. You know that? So they'll they'll talk things like, hey, what's your handicap? And the other golfer said, my handicap is self. Many times you are your own worst enemy. The things that you think about, the things that you say, the things that you do. And God wants you to come and to not use your earthly Weapons. He wants you to use the spiritual weapons. That's why it's called spiritual warfare. We need to wage this war. And that our handicap will be totally destroyed. Each of us have these handicaps and we need to deal with them. Strongholds, they must come tumbling down. And friends, I pray that you've learned something tonight from this message. I pray that you will start praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. If we're going to see change 
We've got to pull down the strongholds. We've got to pull down those strongholds. Because maybe they weren't dealt with before. But over time, they've now not just a hold. It's become a stronghold. And you're battling. Maybe sometimes you may be embarrassed and how the thing has overtaken your life and it's changed you so much. You can't face society. It's time to come and repent before the Lord. It's time to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me. Forgive me. Set me free. And you'll see God will do it. We need to start facing the enemy within. We need to start facing the enemy within. And I'm going to leave it there now. And we're going to go and pray. And friends, we need to go and pray and pull down strongholds. It's time that we start examining our hearts and saying, Lord, what has got hold of me? What is this thing? What is self allowed to control my life that it even has pushed out my first nature? That first nature that should be loving. That first nature that should be glorifying and praising the Lord. I've now become controlled by that second nature. It's become a familiar spirit. Friends, we need to start dealing and facing the enemy within. So we're going to go and pray now. I'm going to encourage you. Take the word that you've heard and run with that word. Start seeking the Lord to fast and pray and dwell in the things of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to release those that are on the broadcast right now. I'm going to encourage you, go and pray. Go into your closet, go into your bedroom, wherever you pray. If you're with your family, gather together, let's pray. We're going to do the same. Put on some background music and just pray. 15, 20 minutes and then we're going to end. Friends, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. And those that are online that haven't heard the announcement, on Saturday morning at 7 a.m., we are holding a Jericho march. I said a Jericho march. That we're going to start taking back territory. And we would love for you to come and join us if you're here in the area. But I want to encourage you to pray along with us. We're going to boot the devil out. We're going to take back territory for God. We're going to possess the land. And we're going to take back. We're going to see the walls come tumbling down. In the spiritual realm, we're going to see strongholds broken in Jesus' mighty name. Come and join us. Those that are here with us, come and join us. And uh, Lorna has sent out a message uh, that we're going to make some sandwiches. Keep it in the, in the packet. Make them all ready. Don't cut them. And we will make some toasted cheese sandwiches or something afterwards we've got the toasters already uh, the snackwiches or whatever they're called and we're going to enjoy some fellowship time afterwards but we'd love for you to be with us and remember friends that Jesus Christ is Lord and we love you and the Lord is for us and he never leaves nor forsakes us God bless you amen I'm in love with a wonderful friend who gives life that never will end Yes, He died on the tree To redeem you and me This wonderful, wonderful friend Yes, I love this wonderful friend Jesus, you I'll serve to the end Till the day that I see You in all your glory My wonderful wonderful friend there's a day when he's coming again when this world our Jesus will reign what a day that will be when Jesus we see our wonderful wonderful friend yes I love this wonderful friend Jesus you are served to the end day that I see you in all your glory.